I think through that creativity and through that problem solving that, that is instilled in all architects, we're in a good place to, to, to develop. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and today I have the distinct honour of conversing with Mr. Daniel Leon, the esteemed founder of Square Feet Architects. So Square Feet prides itself on fostering amiable and constructive partnerships with clients, as well as specialists ranging from interior designers and artisans to engineers. This collaborative approach, centred around genuine dialogues, ensures the successful realisation of architectural projects. Before establishing Square Feet, Dan Leon undertook his studies in Liverpool and in Seattle. His professional journey saw him contribute to architectural endeavours in Manchester and Sydney. And furthermore, during his tenure in London, he collaborated with renowned firms such as Levitt Bernstein, Bushko Henley and others. His portfolio includes very commendable projects such as the Urban Regeneration and Housing Schemes in Dublin and Leeds, cultural ventures like St. Luke's Old Street for the London Symphony Orchestra and noteworthy structures for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Between 2014 and 2017, Dan served as a councillor for the RABA and to this day he is an active member of the RABA Library Committee overseeing outreach, curating the drawings collection and orchestrating exhibitions. He's also registered as an RBA conservation registrant and his expertise has led to him to be a judge for the prestigious RBA Sterling Prize and he partakes in the design review panel and the Jewish Heritage UK's caseworker panel. Moreover, the Westminster School of Architecture often welcomes him as a guest critic. In this episode, we talk about some of Dan's very interesting research where he's been comparing other professions from lawyers, from doctors, from, from the movie industry and how they procure their work and how they um, make things happen. We talk about the current state of architecture um, and the industry and some of the pitfalls that many small practices find themselves in. And we talk as well about their own forays into development and increasing business efficiency in his own business, Square Feet Architects. So sit back, relax and enjoy Dan Leon. Have you ever had trouble finding an architectural photographer who could really make your project shine? Today's episode is sponsored by renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies. Tobin Davies eliminates the hassle by traveling to your location to create the stunning photographs your project deserves, and we are happy to support him here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Visit TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com to book a shoot in less than 10 minutes and ask about the special offer for Business of Architecture podcast listeners. Again, that's TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com. Dan. Welcome Hello. to the Business of Architecture. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Well, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. You are uh, one of the, the co-founders of Square Feet Architects. You guys have got a very interesting portfolio of work. You've got uh, projects in mixed-use developments, private resi. You've done a lot of education, community work, a lot of cultural buildings. You've got a very interesting set up as well where you've kind of you've started to uh enter into the world of doing your own developments and there are other service services that you guys provide such as the square feet home square feet develops we can talk a little bit about that and how the business is set up but a beautiful portfolio um and i know that you've been you know you've got a act a very keen active interest in the business side of architecture and you've been practicing for a, a long period of time um perhaps we just kind of get a sense from you um you know when did you when did you start the practice um how did how was it born sure um well um uh, 20 years ago i mean it just feels like yesterday how time flies and i know i don't look old enough but um the uh, i mean my, my potted cv is uh studied in liverpool uh, and Seattle um, for a period and then went back to uh, Manchester where I'm from and did part three there and went off to uh, Australia to Sydney in the late 90s uh, to work on some Olympic projects um, before the 2000 Olympics there and then uh, came back and had a stint at uh, Levitt Bernstein and Bush O'Henley where I was an associate um, uh, which is now Henry Halebrand. Um and and then had the opportunity, the way things do, friends and friends of friends, 
asking, doing a bit of moonlighting on some domestic kind of projects. Um, and things sort of evolved from there. So it, it, was, it was kind of interesting, you know, just classic working on the kitchen table to start with, uh, grew a bit, hired a part one. Um, and then I kind of realized in that year, actually, that um, that part one was doing all the, all the nice work and I was doing all the admin and all the, let's call it all the crap. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it, it's you know so anyway that 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 part when I went back to college and finished finished his studies etc and and so thinking about who my second hire was a little bit more strategically and that person was was an admin person uh, uh, not an architect not a drawer uh, someone who'd worked in um, for contractors beforehand so knew one end of a brick from another but but nevertheless wasn't um, wasn't an architect. So leaving the design, the drawing to me and a lot of, let's call it the other admin stuff to, uh, to her. And actually she's, she's, you know, cut to 16, 17 years later, she's still working with me, uh, as office manager and, our, uh, and she's running our square feet home, uh, side of things now. So, um, and then, you know, over years, work, 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 uh, work was gathered and, uh, teams was grown and sort of about, 10 people about uh, three or four years ago. Um, and as you say, doing uh, from Square Feet, Square Feet Architects doing a range mainly of sort of resi uh, of all sorts of shapes and sizes, typically from one to 50 uh, so, uh, units, from one-off houses to blocks of flats. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some schools, uh, nursery schools, secondary schools, uh, business schools, things like that. Um, and some community projects, places of worship, places works for charities. Uh, things like that. So, um, and then all of a sudden, the world changed a little bit. I think um, with Brexit initially, yeah. Um, then COVID, and, and 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 then you know, sort of, the world changed a bit in terms of that. There was um, an increase in salary costs, running costs, all sorts of things. So. It, it was really, really a time to, re, to, to rethink about the way the way the practice the way the practice was operating. Um, you know, the classic stereotypical way a, a, a firm uh, architect set up is you know a couple of mates from college get together, win a competition, win a project, um, and then hire a bunch of staff and slowly you know look look for that next project in order to to keep those staff busy and et cetera et cetera and it's and it seems a bit of a um and quite hierarchical with with those those maybe those one or two uh leaders three or four leaders uh at, at the top and and then a sort of a, a bunch of other people below uh, and, and those leaders needing to win the work in order to feed the machine and it's not necessarily and i've got friends who run big practices and they feel that sometimes those big practices are more like in, uh, employment agencies rather sure. than rather than actually sort of design practices and the and the you know the leaders are, are more managers than leaders you know um and and because they know how to do the job my, 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 my first boss i remember uh, where i did my part three in in, in um in manchester i remember him telling me that he, he did, a, did a stint working in the states and in the states Traditionally, an architect's practice was set up by one architect, one accountant, and one marketing person. Um, and so an architect was relatively a small part in that cog or the delivery of architecture so that the architect could, whereas the other business aspects of it was dealt by, uh, delivered by, if you like, the specialists. Um, and, um, you know, I think some architects do become good businessmen, you know, through the good business people, through their Problem solving skills through creativity, through their communication skills, through the, the boot camp of the crit system of university, etc. Um, but um, not all, and, and sort of seem to sort of struggle through. And it seems to be that lots of practices go from sort of feast to famine, and it's it, 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 it's difficult. I think we all do. You know, now now we've sort of reduced our team down and. Um, and delivering things in a much more sort of lean way. But it, it sort of led me to think about and investigate, and just as, as, as I see uh, friends and family 
in different industries, different professions about how they deliver their projects, you know, be it, you know, a project being, uh, be, be it a, um, um, a, a, a medical case, a patient, how, how, to, how to get that person uh, better, or it might be a law case, uh, how to um, um, deal, with, deal, deal with a particular legal question, um, or, um, you know, it could be making a film or making music, making an yeah. album, making... Um, uh, and so I started to chat to these people about how they do it. And I know, you know, anecdotally, the way barristers work very much more in a, as in the chambers, they're sort of much more solitary, but and, and they uh, contribute to the overheads of the admin of, of the chambers. Uh, and they deliver their work, and I think they give 10, 20% of their income uh, to the chambers to cover for the clerks and whatever else. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they can um, draw down the skills of pupils um, as necessary, but often often they're, they're kind of working pretty solitary in order to deliver that case, and they're, 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 they're kind of freelance. And, and some GPs are not freelance, they're sort of self-employed uh, in, in a way. Uh, and, and, so they're, know, kind of, they're kind of like contracted with the chamber. The chamber is something that's helping them well, bring in the work. Well, they're kind of self-employed. No, the, the, I don't think the chamber does. Sometimes it does, I think. Um, right. And um, no, they're kind of self-employed. Um, right. And are responsible to do their own marketing and networking and whatever else in order to bring in their work. And the um, and talking to a, a, another sort of law firm uh, who operates a legal firm in that way, they, he, he has a, provides an umbrella uh, mm -hmm. for the marketing. And, what, and what's quite prohibitive in law, I've learned, is about uh, the uh, PI, the professional indemnity, the, the, the and, and the uh, compliance issues, uh, particularly when you're dealing with client money. So um, they provide that umbrella mm -hmm. under which um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the 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 sort of the professionals can do their work. Um, GPs can w work in a similar kind of way. Uh, doctor GPs work in a similar kind of way. Uh, hospitals are, are sort of quite different. They're much more hierarchical. So, you know, if all of a sudden uh, you, you need to go into hospital for an operation, you'll be, you, 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 there's a consultant who's got mm -hmm. a team of, um, uh, of, of uh, SHOs, senior house officers and, and, and registrars and, and other thing. And that consultant might do the operation mm -hmm. or might get, depends how complicated it is. Um, so it's a, that's a bit more like the way an architect's office works in order to deliver that project. Sure. Um, so, interestingly, you know, you kind of took it upon yourself to kind of do that kind of research and talk with those professionals. And I think I, I've always found it quite interesting that some of the ways that architects bill, you know, certainly with, you know, hourly billing and itemized billing, that's a very, I mean, it, it's very problematic for a lot of architects that kind of billing or they get themselves into all sorts of trouble and client pushback something very common that you'll we'll see with lawyers and i've often wondered if architects sometime in the past saw what lawyers were doing with their clients and thought it was a good idea to mimic them and then yeah. started to mimic those it, sorts of structures as because they were other professionals and then never really delivered it as well as the lawyers it, have been able to it, do it. It, in terms of charging by on a time basis you mean yeah yeah, I think I, I understand that's less common now. I know. I think right. we, I think we were always told that you know, as soon as you pick up the phone to look, they they, they deal in six minutes increments, which is a <laughs> ten, ten, tenth of an hour. That's that's how they work. That's how they used to work. Um, I think it's a little bit less so. I think they're getting much more pressured. The way architects have been to uh, do much fixed fee type of to do much more fixed fee, and I think they're much more. I think. Uh, the law society held on a little bit longer than the RIBA did in terms of fee scale fee scales. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think they're, they're under similar kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, interesting in terms of that they ha AI is a, is a real pressure on, uh, on lawyers as well. Right. Um, apparently, uh, last month or recently, a, um, the, a, 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 a judge in a New York court gave their summary the first, the first time a judge in, in, in a court has gave their summary, which had been written by ChatGBT. Oh, wow. Um, I, think this, I think this judge wanted to be the first to do it, so he kind of did it. But I think, I think he'd written the long version and then got ChatGBT to, 
and, and he, he, de- it. He, he yeah he declared it a thing yeah. you know uh, um but it was a sort of interesting thing and and you know, I understand that document uh, searching, you know, in, in the traditional ways, you get a, a bunch of, tr- of um, junior lawyers to file, to go through piles that we've, we've seen in the films, piles of uh, files looking for a particular word in an email uh, that might be looking to bring down the company or something. Um, and that's done very much more by AI now. So I think this is the other thing that's influenced my, my thinking. The way, the, way, the way we were doing things you know, 20 years ago, it's quite a different world now in terms of so many things. Um, the, 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 the car designer chap was interesting who I chatted to because um, he had, and I was thinking, okay, the design of a car is similar to designing the building, the complex things. I mean, uh, I think part of what we're looking at is that the things that we do as, as architects, we design complicated things. Buildings are complicated and they've got to last long and they've got to, and they've got a, 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 a a sort of a, a site context, uh, ref, um, they need to reflect the, the context. Um, whereas a car might not need to, whereas, you know, a, a, a shirt might not need to, might mm-hmm. need to last as long. Um, uh, you know, uh, if you're making an ad, you know, it, it, it doesn't last as long. Maybe it's somebody that most don't. Uh, so the, the, making a building is a complicated thing. The, uh, talking to the car designer, he, he was saying that, um, because another aspect of this is, is the way the team's built up, is that he used to deal very much more on a on a freelance, having a, a workforce which was a much more of a freelance base. Um, as, as people used to, uh, people used to come in and uh, uh, commission them to design this, that, and the other, and that and they'd grow up and down as required. Brexit's really hit that mm-hmm. um, because the pool of available qualified people in a very specialized world is small um and in order to, he feels in order to deliver his projects he needs to have people there uh that he can rely on and develop a team and uh i mean one of the other conversations we've had because i've been talking to some architects as well uh have a good chat with uh, an old friend old old uh, work colleague uh, indy joho um of uh, zero zero and he, yeah. he, was, he, he was he was talking very much about that not interested in freelance because um it's the loss the the knowledge that's lost uh within a within a team he he he, he said that you know that fosters and rogers um are building de- are designing buildings now which have got decades of knowledge mm-hmm. it's it, it, it you know it's it's a it's a knowledge it's a pool of knowledge that is a knowledge economy we were talking about. Yeah, it kind of com- and it compounds itself over time, where Absolutely. it becomes more more valuable. In a very interesting kind of set of um, research here, did you ask any of these different professions the kind of you know regular profit margins that they aim for, or the I kind of fin- or the kind of financial performance? And what what I, did you discover? I didn't actually. What 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 I, what I did though learn was, was that. Um, in TV, because it's mainly a freelance world, mm-hmm. um, most people and then TV and film, um, a, a, a crew is is set up for a particular uh, a film, um, and, and most people in, in those worlds expect only to work six six months or nine months of the year, mm-hmm. um, and it's a tough business. And, and and I think I think barristers also have quite look quite a lot of periods of lean time because they're self employed looking for the next thing, um, and so I suspect proportionally their hourly rates might be higher than architects in order to compensate for that time off, but nevertheless they've got more time off. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what 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 I was asking about, which I was kind of interested in as well, was about liability. Um, and you know, as architects, it's becoming you know we're, we're walking an increasingly narrow t- tightrope with sustainability and fire and increased costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's becoming harder. And, and, um, you know, one of the conversations I had with a guy who runs a marketing company, you know, what a uh, PR company, what keeps them awake at night? Well, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, defamation, it's libel. Um, talking to the, the, uh, the guy who makes films, what keeps him awake at night? It's the, um, lead actor twisting his ankle. Um, and so the whole thing has to go on hold for, so, right. You know, we're, we're, we, we design things 
architects design things that we're worried are going to fall down or leak or you know whatever that, those kind of things um and 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 we have those worries that uh, that that um and and delivering things on time and our budget and all those kind of things but um it, it's it's um I think the complexity and the longevity of the projects are the things that, that sort of influence things. Um, and uh, the, the knowledge, the complex. Well, I, I, was, uh, I, I was sitting down with my, my, my son um, and we were watching a, a, a Netflix film about the building of the James Webb Telescope. Oh, amazing. Uh, Fantastic. Have you seen it? It's fantastic. I haven't seen that. I haven't, I'm, well, I've, I've watched a, a number of documentaries on that telescope. It's just yeah. mind-bogglingly wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and the, that is a project, if you're talking about projects, you know, that was thousands of people over, over a decade. Yeah. Um, billions of dollars or whatever billions it was. Billions of dollars. And, they, and, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's becoming sort of common parlance in our industry about the golden thread through post Grenfell, et cetera, about, um, yeah. uh, about that continuity of thought in design mm -hmm. and understanding where the risks and the problems are. And, you know, that, uh, let's, let's, let's see James Webb is the ultimate, you know, com complicated project uh, or so far that we, 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 we lot have done. Mm -hmm. And um, it's um, uh, th that continuity of thought between obviously different departments, somebody designing the, the shield, someone designing the text and, and, and that bringing it all together. And it was, and it did feel still like there was one person at the helm of all this who brought it all together because some of those junior engineers were coming and going perhaps as, as life happened. But I think there was this, this, this sort of one guy at the helm who brought it all together. And I think that is, that that is the sort of the the thing which maybe is still required that maybe uh as things get split up into different uh sections and things get passed between different people within a a project to deliver that project i think it does need that one mind to understand that and that's what sort of when when, when you subcontract things out to other people uh you, you lose that clarity of thought um so yeah no it's, it's interesting I mean, the, the, you know another another you know snippet the other i was watching uh an interview with ridley scott uh promoing his new film napoleon uh, napoleon yeah um and he's he, you know as a as a sort of a, le a leader and, and i think people have talked about it before about as architects so we are we producers or directors? You know, what, what are we? You know, and I think, I think maybe, well, I don't know, maybe different architects are different producers, uh, are more producers than architects, uh, are directors. But mm -hmm. uh, I think since the advent maybe of project managers, uh, we're more directors. I don't know. Well, that's, that's, that's very interesting. And also kind of, you know, I'm trying to understand from a client's perception where they view the architect and actually where do we make more money as being like a director or do we make more money as being a producer and what are, and what are we better at i mean the, i think the the producer from what i understand uh, is much more the man uh, the person who is pulling to, with them about the money yeah, um the developer the, the yeah the logistics well, yeah or, or, or yeah maybe the developer or is, or is, or is the developer the um the developer would probably be like an executive producer, right? Yeah, or an investor. I don't know. An ex yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was kind of interesting thinking about film. So, so the chap I was talking to uh, makes uh, big blockbuster uh, TV films mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're for BBC and, uh, and um, Amazon and others. And they, they've got a really small core team that um, look for the next projects. They're doing... Uh, um, um looking reading books finding scripts and taking those ideas to you know the the the, the broadcasters to say uh, how about you want to you know we want an option on this that's in the other and that's a little bit like a feasibility study in my mind i think um and then you know which which a couple of people can do relatively in an agile way because you know he, he, he ultimately he grows from five or six people that he's got in his production company to couple of hundred by the time he's making make you know actually making the film um and the 
and then that sort of evolves and, 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 and scripts are written and, and, and pilots are made and samples are done and things are developed. Um, and ultimately, it's only really when they get to, and I think maybe, maybe that script writing is planning. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the, uh, the, the pilot is detail design or something. I don't know what. I don't know. Or, or making, a, making, a, make, making a prototype um, of, of part of it. And then it's only really, as, as they call it, they crew up and they, they gather this whole range of people, um, uh, of, exec- of assistant directors and et cetera, et cetera, uh, in order to do it. And it could be a couple of hundred people from the people who are, the, the, uh, who are doing the, the operating the cameras to operating the sound. Um, and, and, it was, and, and, and so maybe, that, maybe the actors and the guys who, 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 are, who are operating the cameras, et cetera, maybe they're the contractors, maybe they're the builders in our, in our little sort of analogy. Mm-hmm. Um, what they have, which we don't have, is post-production. Um, so for a year after you know, it's all been shot, they sit and, and, and choose, oh, should we take this cut or that cut? Could do a little bit of CGI even. Um, but it can be that uh, they, uh, they're on set and they're shooting a scene and, and the, uh, uh, the director who, who's not particularly financially savvy wants you know, uh, um, a few, uh, all sorts of angles uh, and they've got to get off set that day and they don't shoot, shoot all the things. So they've got to cut the, cut the scenes and maybe that's like down specking. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. it's just kind of... Um, value engineered, yeah. Value engineering, that's, 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 that's it. And um, the thing is, though, is, is that, you know, their product, I mean, what's the worst thing that happens if a film's a bit of a, uh, um, a, bit of a doo-doo? It, it is, you know, get straight to VHS, as they used to say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and obviously the, the the other thing about film is you've got the capacity to be able to scale. Yeah, which was kind of very different from the world of architecture. We're, we're one of the kind of inherent kind of constraints that we have as architects is that it's you know our services are kind of typically one-off things, and there's a lack of ability to be able to to scale it or to repeat. Yeah. Some, to repeat something, or yeah, you know, the yeah. beauty of a beauty of a film is that it's essentially a, a kind of completed product that's low ticket at the end of it in terms of its consumer and and also you can make money off that film for 50 years or so most don't you know most lose a lot of money most don't so no exactly um it was interesting actually you see the ridley scott about you know he, he comes from an advertising art school background mm-hmm. um and he he does, you know, just as again reflecting on what we do, he, he, he storyboards it himself. Uh, he can draw. Yeah, he's a wonderful uh, artist, isn't he? I've yeah. Seen. Um, so, in terms of that translation and that clarity of thought and that golden thread, um, he, he, he does it, you know. Um, and so, so, what did all this research then, what kind of conclusions did you draw from it that, that, that have been applied into Square Feet? It, it, it's still work in progress. I have to say that. Um, it's in, and and I'm and I'm still, you know, um, speaking to people. I've uh, got some more kind of interviews lined up. Um, talking to different architects, they do doing different things. You know, there's obviously architects that um, we all know who, who who are work on a much more sort of collaborative basis. Um, less of this sort of hierarchical traditional. Um, basis um and, and, and other industries um so i mean i think i think um uh, uh, well, we, you know we do so many architects is, is, is it 50 percent of all uk practices are sort of uh, uh micro practices or something i don't want to figure it but it, it, it's it's um mainly and we're kind of pretty much of a cottage industry i think the way we do things uh and that information share is pretty poor the amount yeah. of reinventing the wheel that's going on is um, inefficient, and and also the, the the amount of lost experience within. Um... Well, it's 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 kind of mind blowing, and, and particularly in the context of you know the the rise of modern tech companies and open source, and yeah. how they're constantly sharing creative ideas and code and things like that. Yeah, and it is completely baffling that why 
you know, architects, particularly like micro practices are working in, are finding themselves working in silos yeah. of, of information where, yeah. you know, a, a kind of networked, a much better networked industry would be able to provide a kind of common set of resources that would yeah. infinitely be able to write, well, exponentially rather, um, increase the value that an architect is able to deliver. I mean, I'm in kicking around ideas in terms of, you know, loosely called what one was called sort of spare cap, which is all of a sudden you've got these practices which have got uh, their team uh, of I don't know whatever the project's been put on hold and that team is sitting there, you know, as as as, as things do, um, their team sitting there twiddling their thumbs and and that practice needs to reassign them, whereas another practice somewhere down the road. And I know some practices are, are doing this, but this idea of a, a network of practices yeah. who share capacity, spare cap was most of the, Yeah, uh, we have the London, the London Forum, I suppose, are doing that. Exactly, exactly. So th th there are practices doing that, and that's necessary. The other thing is mentoring and how much uh, mentoring that's going on. Uh, in mid-career you know, mid practices, um, I was sort of trying to develop a platform for that. You know, again, it's, you know, it's another book call it Minotaur, which sounds a bit like Mentor, but stuck in that labyrinth. I don't know, you must be. Um, and, um, and, and having those people who are, let's say, I don't know, in their 50s, 60s, mentoring those, those, those startups and not having to reinvent the wheel. It, 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 there needs to be much more of that interface. And this type of thing the RIBA should be doing, frankly. You know, it should be you know a guild of knowledge uh, sharing all this, and I know it does it, and it's a, and it's a and it's a behemoth of, of, a, of an organisation that could should be doing things better. Um, but nevertheless, it, that there are opportunities here that the amount of experience and knowledge that's just being you know thrown away as as those architects retire. Yeah, uh, why aren't they becoming non-execs um, in small practices? Um, and uh, saying, you know, you know, yes, you could do it like that because uh, technology, uh, things are moving forward and we all need to move forward, but maybe think about it. I don't mm -hmm. know, you know, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's, um, it, it's frustrating at times. Uh, I'm, I'm part of a, a WhatsApp group, which is fantastic, of over 100 architects uh, in there, lots of small practices. And the, the information and knowledge share there is great. Um, the, the the opportunities for for doing that, you know, needs to be needs to be more. But um, it's uh, it's it, it's interesting. I, th I think so, so, some summary, so, some uh, takeaways about it being agile. Um, and and I know it's not it's not um, mind blowingly new ideas, but that that idea of really being on top of your overheads. Yeah, not not um, you know because it's very easy to scale up when the times are good and you've got a big team. Um, uh, but just I think my advice would be just think about what if what if your team was half the size as you are growing, um, um, as you're looking to double. Think what it would look like when it's half the size. Mm -hmm. You know that those I, I, there's lots of people who are trying to shift software licenses or. What are uh, big offices that are too big because there's people working from home? Whatever, you know, just really, really, really be, um, I think, a, 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 a little bit prudent mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to overhead, so that you know, because as they say, shit happens, and 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 I think you, I think one needs to operate in an agile kind of way. Um, it's the things that people are talking about about collaboration, and you know, we've got all sorts of things with. Different people, not mainly not architects, actually people who can provide different skills that um, we don't necessarily have as a core team, but we can crew up as the use uh, the parlance in the film business uh, to, in order to deliver those bigger projects. We still need that core team who who, who know what they're doing, but maybe with slightly more senior people. Um, it's difficult, you know, uh, uh, and, and of course, just hiring senior senior people is a more expensive model than 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 having. Uh, sort of more junior people, but it, 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 it's I think it's quite efficient because um, that is that knowledge retention through a project and um, with a client that's 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 that's, that's so essential. I think. Yeah. Um, um, let, let's talk a little bit about um, your forays into 
your own development and mm. where that's come from um what sorts of projects have you delivered and the, and the kind of kind of business models that you've used or business vehicles that mm. have you used to deliver them well uh, um it, it, it's a newish sort of outlet we've done a couple of things um and i think having having been in the you know in in the business for a little while now as i say square feet's 20 years old um this year next year um congratulations and, yeah no, no. <laughs> uh, and they said it would never last um and um and then before you know so so um uh, of of worked on quite a lot of things and and i think you know <laughs> you, you do lots of work to, for developers and i'd i'd like to think that uh, i've learned a bit from them too rubbing shoulders uh, asking them why is it like that not like that so uh, opportunity came about um to buy uh, uh the first one was a site um uh, up um, up towards uh, St Albansy um which was an old car park um that um i bought before it went into an auction it was um and um managed to get planning permission on it uh, to build uh, a few houses uh i mean the process through that was was um exciting yeah uh, because it, it got refused and and ultimately got a, 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 um approved on appeal um but took all the all the uh, twists and turns and guile uh that uh, that that uh, that and, and cunning that, a, that that one has and picked up in order to get it over the line. So, you know, for example, there were some cantankerous neighbours who who were who were a st stumbling block. Um, so there was a pub across the road from the site. I said I was going to sit in that pub that that a particular night and uh, with a set of drawings and answer any questions and buy anyone a drink, and uh, that seemed to smooth out any problems. So um, smooth out any of the objections and get it over the line. It was passed. Um, I, in the end, we sold it uh, at a at a at a nice profit, um, and uh, without without building it, I would have built it. I I know how to build. I'm not afraid of building. Uh, I know that's where additional risk lies. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I decided to um, um, you know fold and twist another time, as it were um and um great so you, you say that the, the you kind of applied your design ideas to give a uplift in value to the site sold yeah it. yeah and, and, then, and then did it did it do similar on a, on a second one and kind of rolled that profit on and and um i mean I'm looking for a next one to be honest at the moment uh mm -hmm. di didn't didn't build them um because the the profit added uh through planning was was was, was good you know the, um um so i think um all of a sudden the risk associated with building i know how to build but equally you know the rise in building costs is is, is scary mm -hmm. uh, and at the time there was you know shortage of building materials and also things like that going get worrying us all so i i, I cashed in and uh looking for the next one you know things are really difficult now uh talking to other developers about uh getting that that gap with Building building costs going up and values coming down and interest rates going up, so it, it's a bit of a perfect storm. And and the increase increased costs in terms of fire and sustainability, it's a bit of a perfect storm at the moment against developing. Uh, people are certainly doing it, but it's it's certainly harder, I think, than it was. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, um, we all, we're sort of doing sort of joint ventures, looking at doing joint ventures with with people. I had a a, um, a joint venture for a for a brief period a few years ago, um, which was myself, a planning consultant and a site finder. And between us, we put together deals, uh, did, a, uh, did a design, did a planning report, did an appraisal and packaged that up to take to developers to invest. Um, that, that, was, that was looking good. I think, I think um, we didn't quite get anything over the line. But I'd like to think that I've got a Bit of entrepreneurialism, a bit of a commercial head on me to be able to know my way around a spreadsheet, yeah. um, and uh, and you know I think through that creativity and through that problem solving that that is instilled in all architects, um, I, I think we're we're in a good place to to, to develop. Um, have to be you know careful because it's you know you, what, what, it's a costly business as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I recommend doing it with other people that have done it a lot 
um, in order to th those negotiations with the bank or, uh, or or when the bank come knocking halfway through the project and change terms, you know that that that, that can be quite a squeaky bum time. Mm -hmm. So it's um, uh, not to be good, not to be gone in faint heartedly, but nevertheless, it can be lucrative certainly. What um what kind of insights did you, have you gotten from doing you know you kind of got these sorts of self initiated projects that have increased the the service capacity that you give to say your developer clients or you know what kind of insights have you, insights have you learned from these self initiated projects that have improved your service towards developer clients? I think I can better talk their language actually mm -hmm. and, and and understand their pressure points. Um, and you know some some developers are you know are obviously um design focused um but many aren't uh, many are, are, are profit focused um and so to understand what their pressure points are and and it's often about how long things are going to take and how long things are going to cost you know it's all that kind of stuff and i think you know it, it's what we've done throughout as being architects um um We've taken on projects sometimes that have, which have just paid the bills. You know, we we, we categorise some of our projects uh, as 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 being a, a sort of category A, B, or C kind of project. Mm -hmm. um, an A project is is um, might might be a sort of a, a tasty project, but which we might not make very much money on. Uh, and you know, a, and a, a, a B might be might make a bit of project, but you know, and and it's a matter of some design aspect. And a C is probably going to uh, be a bit of a turkey of a of, of a kind of a project, but we might make some good money on it. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, as the projects come in, we actually are quite clear about, okay, guys, what 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 is this? This okay, this is a C. Let's get on with it. Let's do mm -hmm. it. Let, let's just make let's make maximum uh, profit out of this project. But um, but we've always had to introduce some design by stealth. I think that's what I was going to say. You know, even a, a project where we're not necessarily singing from the same hymn sheet as um as the client uh maybe different in terms of taste or whatever it might be sure uh or aspiration um you sneak in you sneak in something you know that maybe the client knows about or don't know about maybe it's just a maybe it's just a an architrave detail i don't know what um but somewhere that you actually can point to that project that wasn't a complete waste of time uh, and so with developers uh if they're just all about profit and whatever else you don't tell them that that you've designed this nice little bench by the front door where you can take off your boots before going in or whatever. You know, it's there and they might and, and once it's built, they go, oh, that's nice. But, you know, uh, so it, 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 it's by stealth sometimes. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, um, you, 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 you talk, you learn to talk there their language, understand what they're after. And, you know, we, we are a service industry at the end of the day, whether we like it or not. We, we don't build, you know, not with these nice hands anyway. Um, <laughs> um, and, um, you know, we, we, we push paper, we make, we make paper uh, or, or destroy perfectly nice, perfect blank paper. Um, so to explain a little bit about how you know when you, your service offerings at Square Feet, how you kind of present them. So I know, like you know, the the Square Foot Home, for example, a specialized service for for homeowners. Um, you could tell us a little bit about that and the the kind of marketing and the the way it's been structured. Sure. Um, so yeah, a couple of years ago, um, we sort of set up a little uh, um, separate business, which is kind of a small works department, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, which is a uh, it's called Square Feet Home, which is a more of a bespoke service for residential clients. Um, it's a separate company to Square Feet Architects set up uh, um, with Angela, who was the person I was referring to, who joined who, who joined me fifteen sixteen years ago. Who we've known each other since we were teenagers, mm -hmm. um, and um, and she's not an architect, and she's sort of. Be uh, become a project manager, uh, learned a lot by osmosis through uh, sitting next to architects for a long time. Uh, and it's that hand-holding service for um, homeowners um, who perhaps are 
don't have the time to run around to find those tiles of that floor, wooden flooring or that kitchen or shop or whatever else. And it's a bespoke service for, for those people, hand-holding them, um, square feet home, uh, might buy its architectural services from Square Feet Architects or from a whole a whole uh, roster of separate uh, freelancers. Um, and um, so, how, so how is the how is the services of Square Feet Home distinguished from the services of Square Feet Architects? Well, it's, it's, I'd say it's much more hand holding. Uh, it, 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 it is it is offering that interiors uh, that full sort of turnkey package. We've got. We've got clients who, are, who work all sorts of hours of the day and have got very, very little time. Um, so, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we do the running around for them. Uh, and also, because lots of home, lots of domestic clients are uh, one-off clients, you know, they, they might do it once, they, they might do it twice, but they but, but the, the, <laughs> like three times. Um, but, um, uh, and, and so there's quite a lot of education that's required about the process, mm-hmm. understanding... You know that whole process of initial design through planning and, and the planning process. We're not we're not dealing with professional developer kind of clients who understand the process. Um, so and there's, and there's sometimes a bit of marriage counselling involved as well uh, <laughs> about, about why what you know uh, the decision of you know um, you know we had one project where someone. We, we, should we have a? Do you need a hook on the back of your bathroom door? And uh, you know, spouse A to spouse B said, um, "Why do you need a hook on the back of the door anyway? You don't hang up your towel any other." Okay, right. <laughs> so, 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 moving on, you know, so don't hang up the towel because there's not a hook on the back of the door. That's why. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, there will be in your beautiful new house. Anyway, so, 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 the, the, there's there's a good there's a good dollar for marriage counselling in the work that we do as well. That's. That's not um, expressed in our uh, appointment terms uh, as a service. It's, it's however, a built-on therapy, marriage however, therapy. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, should we get a divorce or build a back extension? Mm. <laughs> yeah, oh, one's for life. I don't know. Anyway, um, so um, it, 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 it's, it's good. You know, it takes patience, but it's enjoyable because, you're, you know, you're dealing with people who are invested in the project and it's a very... Mm-hmm. There's nothing more personal than someone's home. That's more intimate than their their home. And delivering that for them and their family, a place where they nurture and grow and work, rest and play and all that, um, it, it is much more satisfying than sometimes than doing an office fit out. You know that you know it might get a restaurant sure. fit out. That, yeah, you know that restaurant might fail. So um, yeah, very good, very good. What have you guys got in store for next year? Kind of coming to the end here of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. What are, what are some always, of the things that are exciting you? It's always good to, to take stock at the end of the year. Um, uh, good, good office clear out is always, is always healthy. I like that. Um, but we, we, we've, we've sort of a bit of a new venture going on. I've turned our office into a gallery. I, I, I picked up some paintbrushes for the first time uh, last year. Um, and um, that's a new sort of passion uh, oil painting so and, and as a result of which i've been rubbing shoulders with some interesting creatives and so uh, artists and others and and so in order to we've got a, a meeting room we've got our office is an old is an old bookshop um uh, near marlebone station if you know what i mean and yeah um and uh we we are, 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 are sort of studios in the basement on the ground floor was is, is a kind of meeting room which we've turned into a gallery so that's an interesting place where new interesting people are coming over the threshold uh talking about interesting projects that's led to um all sorts of other sort of collaborations that we're uh, considering and uh with some charities and some arts organizations so that's that that's interesting you know even if it doesn't lead to work it's interesting because rubbing shoulders with other creatives is is always good and it, and it and it informs as i've talked about you know talking with with uh, with lawyers and doctors you know talking to um people who are uh, at another end of the creative industry is uh, is also good we've got some interesting projects um which we um doing a, uh, a library reading room for a theological college which we're just starting work on we've got um um it's a nice couple... it's a nice brief yeah yeah and it's interesting actually um we're, uh, we're we're debating with the engineer about uh, the weight of bookcases at the moment. Actually, anyway, how 
how big and heavy is the is the average book? That's where we're at. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, various residential projects and uh, doing some work for uh, some charities and a business school. So we're 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 we're, we're good. We're good. Excellent. Very good. Well, I think it's a perfect place to conclude the the conversation today. Dan, thank you very much for for sharing that and for sharing your insightful research with um, uh, the other professions that you've been in dialogue with. Is there going to be a, a kind of presentation of that research, or you're going to d- distill it into a book, yeah. articles, or yeah, yeah? I hope to hope, hope to hope to uh, turn it into into a something. It's a bit TBC. Um, yeah, an article or. Um, um, Maybe I'm playing with some infographics as well, which is always fun. So anyway, we'll see. Love it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for uh, coming on this afternoon and really enjoyed uh, it. sharing um, a, you know, a bit under the, under the bonnet of what happens at Square Feet and the different services that you, you provide and your different forays into architectural services and development. It's been absolutely fascinating. So thank you. Brill, thank you. Appreciate it. And that's a wrap. And one more thing. If you haven't already, please do head on over to iTunes or Spotify and leave us a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show and we'd love to get your feedback and we'd love to hear what it is that you'd like to see more of and what you love about the show already. Hey, a quick note. This is Enoch here and I have a question for you. Do you know someone who's highly professional loves speaking with people, and is skilled in the area of professional selling? Well, if so, I'm looking for a director of enrollment to join our team here at Business of Architecture. This is a sales position. And if you or someone you know wants to impact an industry and earn an excellent income doing so, head on over to businessofarchitecture.com for more information. Have you ever been frustrated with architectural photographers who aren't reliable or don't capture your projects the way that you'd hoped? Visit TobinDavies.com or BOAPhotos.com to book renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies to photograph your next project. Tobin Davies travels to your location and specializes in architectural photography for modern design-focused architecture. Again, visit TobinDavies.com or BOAPhotos.com to get more information or book your shoot today. And tell them you heard about him here on the podcast for a complimentary package upgrade. The views expressed on this show by my guest do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond, or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.